texting you and your <laughs> meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do it. Just introduce okay. yourself and let's go. Okay. Yeah, my name's Tim Beach, and I'm uh, local here in the North Georgia area. I've been in, gosh, call collecting. I don't even know if I can put a time frame on it, probably 20 plus years. And that's where I've made a lot of these relationships is either through uh, seeing people at the conventions or ordering calls from people. I mean, like Rick Powell, it's got to be 20 years or so since I got my first call from him way back when. So, uh, you know, this call right here is obviously something that's very unique and I'll kind of kick the story off to right, yeah, about tell, how it started. Tell them what the call is. Yeah, this is the, uh, this is the original Jordan call that everybody sees in the history books. Uh, it's the standard, the holy grail of air operated calls as I like to have told Danny. And um, it's something that Tom Turpin patterned his call after and that became very famous. But during the course uh, several years ago, I guess now on eBay, I see this call pop up and I think there's no way that's the Charles Jordan call, but every bit of research I did, it was. It was there for about a day and it disappeared. And my automatic thought when I ever saw historical calls disappear from something like that is that Danny Ellis bought it. <laughs> so I reach out to Danny and I said, did you buy that call on eBay? And he was in a meeting and he started texting back like, which call? And I went, the holy grail of air operated calls, the Charles Jordan call. He goes, give me a minute. I'm stepping out of my meeting. I'm going to call you. <laughs> he did. I told him the story. I had captured some screenshots of the eBay auction and I sent it to Danny and then you took it from there. I did. The story of how I ended up with this call is pretty interesting. Uh, First of all, uh, when the first time I heard about the call, my friend Tim Beach, this rascal sitting beside me here, had uh, seen the call on eBay and uh, uh, texted me. I was in my office, I was having a really busy day, and he texted me and I came out of a meeting and called him, but I had to go back in to the meeting. Uh, and so uh, I, th I thought he was pulling my leg because turkey call makers are bad to do that to each other, if you know what I mean. And but no, he sent me the, he sent me some screenshots he had he had taken when it was uh, on eBay, and uh, I had a young man that works for me. As I went back into my meeting, uh, contact the uh, seller through eBay, and the seller uh, he messaged him right back with his cell phone number and said, uh, "Call me." And I called him when I got out of the out of the meeting, and and uh, first of all, I asked him. The story of how he ended up with the call because it hadn't been seen I think there was the last thing I knew about it it was the 1930s actually the 1930s and there was a story a magazine article about uh, this call and how uh, CL Jordan met JK Renault uh, on a train uh, back in the 1800s but and then they had a picture of, of this call in that magazine and then it, nobody saw it again until I bought it a few years ago uh, this gentleman out of Texas had been, excuse me, yeah, out of Texas, had been in a, had been at a, a antique gun show and sale. And J.K. Renaud, the, the call, this call was made for J.K. Renaud, and he uh, was also a marksman and a competition shooter. And uh, so some of his belongings were sold at this gun show down in Texas. And the gentleman that had it was 80 some years old and he had bought them. Along with it were some of the shooting trophies that this guy had won. And I have one of those trophies now for as part of the provenance on this, on this call. Uh, but uh, he, I don't know what he paid for it, probably next to nothing. Uh, but uh, uh, so we communicated, I called him and uh, he wanted me to tell him how much I'd, I'd give for the call. And I told him I would not name the price on the call. That, that way, if I did that, he could never say that I took advantage of him if he named the price. I, but I said, tell you what, take 24 hours, talk to some of the people that have called, uh, that have tried to buy this call when you first put it on there, call the, whoever you want to that knows as much as they as you can find about uh, turkey calls and ask for the value of this, and I'll call you back, and I'll uh, you can name a price, and I'll either say, okay, I'll take it, 
or I'll say, no, you know, it was nice talking to you and, and we probably won't ever communicate again. Well, I did call him back the next day and the gentleman said, well, I've done my research. I understand that a turkey call sold on eBay for $57,000. And I said, no, sir, that's not true. The most turkey call ever sold for on eBay was $14,300. I know because I bought it. And uh, uh, he said, well, uh, I said, but one did sell for $57,000. A uh, gentleman I know well or knew well by the name of Parker Wheaton, who was an old collector, sold it to a good friend of mine by the name of Bill Jones down on Sea Island, Georgia. And uh, I know it sold for that because and I have the sister to that call that he bought. Uh, and he said, well, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Will you, will you give me $50,000 for the call? I said, yes, sir, I sure will. Uh, I said, I'll, uh, I'll get you a cashier's check as soon as I can, uh, get it to you, you uh, then you send me the call. And that's, that's how it happened. And you know, it's funny, the, the gentleman didn't even realize what a cashier's check was because he wanted to wait for my check to clear. And I said, no, that's a bank check. That was good the minute, you know, the minute you walk in the door of the bank, they'll give you $50,000 for, uh, for that. And, uh, you know, and the call's been in my collection, and except for the, the time or two like this when I've taken it out, and when this rascal I know hunted with it for a week or so, it's been in a cabinet in my house ever since.